All right, guys, I just found this. Joe Rogan hits back after criticism from The View. Dragon Believer, we have to check this out. We have to. We went from Walter Cronkite, mm -hmm. basically, to this guy, Joe Rogan, who believes in dragons. He, <laughs> I checked it. He, he believes, believes in dragons? He believes in dragons. Did you triple and, <laughs> yes, I did. And he also thinks... <laughs> guys, I listen to a lot of Joe Rogan, and, like, yeah, he says, he says some crazy shit sometimes, but... Uh, <laughs> Dragon believer that they dragons like I guess like dinosaur type type of animals yeah. roamed the earth when people did <laughs> Rogan really leaning into this one by changing his <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay guys, we have to check that just real quick. We have to check that right now. Oh my gosh chat He really changed it to dragon believer. I don't know if you guys could see it, but <laughs> Dude savage <laughs> Dragon Believer. Joe Concha is a Fox News contributor and he joins us now. Joe, this is so up Joe Rogan's alley in terms of what he finds funny to, first of all, be called a Dragon Believer. Yeah. And also to be accused of being an unreliable source of information by the ladies of The View. So, what is your reaction to all of this? Oh, yes, Carly. We should absolutely trust The View and not the guy. Okay, so I have, I've never watched The View, but I have seen that. They are losing their minds right now. And uh, let me know if I should react to one of their videos in the comments. We'll, <laughs> maybe we'll get a chuckle or something. Who revolutionized the world uh, with electric cars, SpaceX. I could go on with the, the accomplishments of, of Elon Musk. Uh, I, I have a question. Do, do stupid people get to a point in life where they realize that they're, you know, stupid? Because this is... No. Sounds like in legacy media. Uh, I've said this before in this program, it's worth repeating again, uh, it, because it's so disturbing. Uh, the View is under the ABC News umbrella. ABC News is run by a woman named Dana Walden. Dana Let me know in the chat if any of you guys even watch the news. I've just been reacting to it lately because it, it's funny to see like how they are acting. And um, yeah, uh, I think it's kind of comical, like what they're doing. Dana Walden is Kamala Harris's very best friend. Uh, they lived right near each other in Brentwood, California, when she was a senator there. Uh, Dana Walden set up Kamala Harris on a blind date with Doug Emhoff, who she obviously is now married to. And now this is what the result is of uh, Dana Walden running ABC News. You have people like Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg under the ABC News umbrella, uh, losing their minds on a daily basis. Uh, and it's it's actually kind of fun to watch, uh, but at some point people are gonna be like, all right, I'm, I don't wanna listen to this anymore because quite frankly, I, I can't trust you people because you told us that Donald Trump was Hitler and now apparently hit. That is true. I did uh, consistently hear people say that Donald Trump was Hitler and a fascist and all this other stuff. Um, yeah, is going to be the 47th president of the United States. That's the media telling you that, right? Even though all of these people on this panel were probably friends with him. Well, not all of them, but maybe these two were friends with Trump before he even ran for president. Isn't that funny? United States, go figure. Well, at some point, I, I would argue that point is already here. I mean, look at the ratings from the election and beyond. I mean, people are not watching yeah. this stuff. And I, I broaden that out to all the facts. It's because people go to Twitter or YouTube or anything else for their information or podcasts because you guys get paid to tell us what's going on, you know? Mainstream media. So, of course the people writing your paycheck are going to tell you to say something, right? And a lot of America is just not going to agree with it. Or they're going to realize that you're lying to them and then they stop watching because it's just fake. Collectively. Um, I'm going to take a different tact on this, though, Joe. Shouldn't conservatives be celebrating this cacophony because it shows that there are factions on the left that still refuse to acknowledge ultimately why Trump won. And There's factions on both sides, by the way. They're just, they were just completely dumping on Trump this time around, you know? Now, well, the first time too, and in 2020. It's, yeah, it's kind of brutal. I don't, uh, 
think any president has gone through what Trump has gone through. And, you know, it makes you respect him a little bit more as a president. And the reasons for it. And so, I don't know, looking ahead to 2026, that bodes well for the Republicans if they still haven't figured out why the Republicans won. It's a great point. We know why the Republicans won. Um, first of all, the media plays a big part in that, and they should have picked a better candidate, you know? God, I mean, I, I said this on this program. I'll, I'll say it again. I, b before the election, you guys know this, I said that I couldn't see how Kamala Harris could beat Donald Trump when Donald Trump was winning over black voters to the amount that he was, Latino voters to the amount that he, do that he did. Uh Where I live, it kind of leans more left. So I was surprised to see how many Trump supporters there was in my area. Obviously, uh, we, we also had the union voters rank and file. He was winning those over as well. We saw, we saw the Teamsters in, in terms of their internal polling uh, that he was winning there big time. And when yeah. you win those three Democratic strongholds, the Democrat dom nominee, in this case, Kamala Harris, didn't have any chance. So, yeah, that's the thing. Like, they should understand that Donald Trump won for a reason, that he resonated with the very viewers that they seek to bring in. A big reason why I was kind of pulling for him to win was uh, I just hope, honestly, I just wanted to see if I just hope he can change what we're going through right now, you know. And I just didn't see that happening with the other side this time around. Usually I'm like in the middle, pretty undecisive. Um, but I definitely leaned way more in favor of Trump this time around. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I'll just leave it there that, that, that Trump resonates with people while people like Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg, Whoopi Goldberg, what? went after a Staten Island bakery because they wouldn't make her a cake because their boiler <laughs> went down? I mean, come on. I mean, this, this is insane. And at some point, people are going to be like, all right, I'm done with you guys. I'm done. All right, really quickly, yeah. continuing with the post-mortem here, here is former NBC News anchor Brian Williams. He was on with uh, Seth Meyers last night. Watch this. It is tough love time for the Democratic Party. I think it needs to be stripped down and rebuilt. I think it's, in, it's insulting. when. True, yeah. Yeah, I think they just need to get their values aligned because they're trying to push this crazy stuff and a lot of Americans just don't want that. You know what I mean? America was built a certain way. Let us live that certain way. You know, like we want our freedom. We want to be able to afford things. You know, those are two simple things. Just freedom, being able to afford things, you know. There's much, much more, but for me, that's it. When members of the working class, which the Democratic Party has lost entirely in our lifetimes, um, to insist the economy is doing great. And I think the biggest unforced error of the Biden administration by far was the border. To tell people it's not a problem is insulting. He also said that he wants to know whose idea it was to have Joe Biden run for reelection at a 38% approval rating when he is the age that he is. I'll be quick, guys. Uh, yeah, we, we talked about this. I've talked about this on the air well before the election. I love hearing this this stuff after the election, but yeah, yeah. the border is a big issue. It's been kind of nuts. It affects every community in this country. The economy, you can't say it's great when people look at their bank accounts and say, no, it's not. And they go to the grocery store and they say, I'm paying twice as much as I did under Donald Trump. So why should I vote for this administration again? So yeah. the analysis is correct. But after the fact, I, I kind of find funny because we talked about it before the election and uh, that's the whole ball game unfortunately and I'm sorry about my voice by the way I'm, I'm fighting a, a bit of a, a cold we'll call it and uh, probably the you know what just oh, trying to fight through it, it. So if you have kids wonderful. you're fighting a cold from October through April everybody yeah, knows that that's true. Joe With Concha starts, you're gonna be yeah. fighting those colds thank that's right. you <laughs> well at least it's the weekend so hopefully you can rest and relax thank you for joining us waking up Thanks, early guys. I'm Steve Ducey I'm Brian Kilney and I mean okay yeah a lot to unpack there but uh, I clicked on the video for the Joe Rogan stuff. Um, we got a little bit more there, and I kind of put my two cents in. So um, if you stayed and watched the whole video, thank you. I appreciate it. Don't forget to 
like the video hit that subscribe button leave a comment let me know what else to check out uh anything's cool um for now maybe click on one of these yes sir have a good one see you guys next time